Tissue culture is essentially just sterile cloning, uh, just to put it in growers' terms. It's multiplying cells, multiplying plants uh, in an exponential fashion. It has several advantages over growing in a regular grow space. Uh, one of them is that you're not using as big of a space. Other advantages are that it's completely sterile, so any diseases that you might have on the plants are going to be completely washed out in tissue culture. Hi, my name is Ben Russin, and I'm a plant tissue culture technician with THC Design. So this is a tissue culture plant that was transplanted about a month ago, and we're looking to take the apical meristem from this plant, so the dominant shoot more or less, and we're hoping to remove any potential viruses or funguses or bacteria within the plant. This appears to be the top meristem of the plant. So I want to take this cut here. Yeah, nice vigorous growth, deep green leaves. We're trying to figure out the optimal size of the cut. The smaller the cut is, the higher the odds you're going to remove a pathogen. But cannabis is finicky. She does not behave the way that most plants do when you put her into a vessel. Most plants, when they're put in the vessel, they have everything they need. They have sugar, they have perhaps hormones, they have water, every, anything they could possibly need. They'll blow up in that vessel. Cannabis has a really tough time for whatever reason. And the smaller the cut, the lower the odds that that cut is actually going to root. But again, the cut needs to be small to remove the virus or the fungus. So that's the tightrope we're walking, trying to figure out the optimal size to actually remove pathogens, but that gives the plant a high survivability rate. THC Design is always trying to push the envelope and bring in the best experts and bring the best methods into cannabis just because those are the things that haven't been done in cannabis just because it hasn't been legal. Uh, one of those things is tissue culture. It's been done for years and years in the scientific community, and they're trying to bring the, all the advantages of tissue culture into the cannabis market. I think cannabis is finicky in tissue culture most likely because of the way it was bred over the past few decades. You've had folks growing in basements and, you know, secluded grows in the woods, all of these confined, secluded uh, spaces. Cannabis was not bred the way every other traditional crop was bred. And we have no idea what that's done to cannabis' genome relative to other plants. Uh, this may have nothing to do with it, but I suspect the way cannabis was bred over the last few decades is contributing to why it doesn't perform well in tissue culture. Tissue culture is another degree of control. So just like you brought outdoor strains indoors and you had a little more control over the growing conditions, we have a little bit more control over you know, everything about the environment that the, the plants are grown in. The main thing is that we can control the diseases that are present in the plant and we can ensure that any plants that come out are completely clean of diseases. So now we're taking the cuts and we're going to place them under light, let them sit for a couple of weeks, and hopefully at that point they'll be rooted out. At that point, we'll transfer them to a new type of media. The reason that meristem culture works is because the meristem is the newest part of the plant. And just to put it in layman's terms, the meristem is the tip of the plant. It's got pluripotent cells. That essentially means that they're stem cells. These cells can differentiate into an entire plant if they wanted to. Essentially, this is our, what we're calling our rooting media. It's uh, something that we're trying to get a little more oxygen to the roots and 
The reason we use the aluminum foil is just an extra layer of sterility. Because these cells are rapidly dividing, the thinking is that some viruses can't keep up with that rapid cell division. The other reason is that since they aren't differentiated, they haven't become the organs that they're going to become. The vascular tissue is not developed. The xylem, the phloem, the things that give, get the water and the food to the plant, that's not developed and that's one of the main ways that the virus or other diseases move through the plant. And now we're adding 10 mils of our experimental rooting media. So this has some nutrients, some hormones, and that is enough to feed the plant for the two to three weeks that it will be in this stage. So that tip of the plant is the healthiest part of the plant. So we take it and we regenerate an entire plant from it that's completely free of disease. So now that the meristems are on our rooting media, which uh, is gonna give it a little bit more oxygen to the roots to allow those roots to get established. Uh, there's also a nutrient mix in there that has uh, rooting hormones in it. It's gonna stay in there for a period of time until the roots get established. And once we see that on the bottom side of the vessel, at that point, we'll take it out, uh, transfer it to the nursery and let it go. Now we're transplanting in the clone room because the humidity in here is very high. The humidity in these vessels when they're in the lab is about 100%, usually 100%. Um, and if we were to open this in a room that was say 50% humidity, that would be a really drastic change and it could damage the plants. So we want them to gradually go from areas of high humidity to relatively lower humidity. I take quite a long time to loosen up the soil around the plant, so I'm damaging the roots as little as possible when I take them out of the vessel. Healthy roots are obviously the most important thing in addition to a healthy stem. I wanna make sure to pack the plant down firmly so that when we water it, it doesn't form um, little sinkholes or it doesn't sink the soil in anymore or the media. With a lot of plants, just the space the plant is in is gonna dictate how big it grows. So they tend to shoot up pretty quickly after transplanting, just like with a normal transplant. I'm extremely excited about the, the possibilities of tissue culture in cannabis. Uh, in the near term, the thing I'm most excited about is getting rid of the dudding virus, or HBLBD. Uh, the, I talk to our growers on a day-to-day -day basis, and the one thing that they tell me the most is that if we were able to get rid of that virus, that would make our already great cannabis even better. And in the long term, tissue culture has the opportunity, like, it, like you said, to engineer better strains uh, and really to just make the quality and consistency of the cannabis better.